deep sea near a volcano is believed as a cradle of origin of life. It is in a supercritical condition above 374 degrees Celsius and 22.1 megapascals. In Achiri Laboratory, we are now challenging to synthesize new materials using the supercritical water condition. First, let's see the method to synthesize new materials using supercritical conditions. From the right-hand side line, preheated supercritical water is fed. From the left-hand side, raw materials, a metal salt organic molecule mixture is introduced. At this mixing point, it is rapidly heated up to the supercritical state, and organic-inorganic hybrid nanoparticles are formed. Now, let's see how the apparatus is operated. This is our experimental setup. All the system is operated automatically, and from the exit, nanoparticles synthesized at the supercritical state are recovered continuously like this. Let's see what kind of nanoparticles are synthesized. This is an example of the products. Cubic shaped nanoparticles, size is around seven nanometers. This is ceria, cerium oxide nanoparticles. But if we magnify this picture, we can see that cerium atom, oxygen atom, cerium and oxygen are regularly arranged so this ceria is a single crystal. And if we see carefully the surface of this crystal, we can see the organic molecules are bound with the surface. It means that organic-inorganic hybrid nanocrystal could be synthesized by the supercritical method. This supercritical method opened a door to fuse organic molecules and inorganic molecules. When we do not use organic materials, particles formed in supercritical water are aggregated as shown in the right-hand side photos. On the contrast, when we introduced organic sources, as shown in the left-hand side photos, hybrid nanoparticles synthesized are uniform in size and beautifully arranged. These are other examples, cobalt oxide nanoparticles and magnetite nanoparticles. Also for these cases, a beautiful nanoparticle are synthesized. Let's measure the distance between these particles. The gap is just double the length of the organic molecules. Organic molecules should be arranged in one layer like a brush on the nanocrystals. Let's analyze the surface of these nanoparticles. This is an analysis result of chemical bond of organic molecules on the surface. From this analysis, we can see that the chemical bond exists between the organic molecule and the inorganic nanoparticles. We also measured the weight change of the particles when we heated this sample. The black curve shows the weight change and you can see that in any extremely high temperature range from 400 to 600 degrees Celsius. This suggests that the bonding between organic molecules and inorganic core nanoparticles are very strong. We reconfirmed that by using supercritical method, really a new hybrid material could be synthesized. By changing reaction conditions, we can control the shape of nanoparticles, cubic or spherical. The cubic shape nanoparticle exposes one zero zero face, which is very unusual for the cerium oxide. By exposing the most reactive 100 phase, this cerium oxide shows extremely high catalyst reactivity, which works even at room temperature. Now, let's see for which materials this method can be used. Metal oxides in the red zone in the periodic table can be synthesized by this method. Green line shows the system that has been experimentally confirmed for hybridization between organic molecule and inorganic materials. We can apply this method for a variety of systems. Not only for metal oxides, but also for metals such as cobalt, copper, and iron, or multi-component nanometals can be synthesized by this method. Because a homogeneous phase can be formed for the hydrogen supercritical water system, and provides a strong reducing atmosphere. Let's disperse these particles. The left-hand side photos are for the normal pigment. 
For our particles, as we can see in the left-hand side, beautiful transparent colored solution type of liquid could be obtained. Because our particles has organic molecules on the surface, it shows high affinity with the organic solvent, so can be dispersed perfectly in the solvent, just like stained glass window of cathedral. In the solution, magnetic nanoparticles are dispersed. Is it true that particles exist in a solvent? Let's check it using a magnet. We can see the particles are gradually approaching the magnet. Yes, particles exist in the solution. By evaporating this solution, we can concentrate the nanoparticle solution to make a honey-type liquid. So this organic, inorganic nanoparticles behave just like liquid chemicals rather than powders. Because the affinity between particles can be controlled, nanoparticles can be crystallized just like chemicals. Now, what kind of applications are expected for this hybrid nanoparticle? Once we can modify the surface of the nanoparticles with organic ligands, we can easily combine other organic molecules on the ligand. Here, we show you an example of polymer nanoparticle hybrids which can be dispersed in an organic solvent and can form a polymer film. Biomolecule can be attached on the ligands, so this can be used for medical application. For example, by tagging an antibody of cancer, we can deliver anti-imaging probe nanoparticle for MRI or X-ray CT to the cancer tumor site and find the cancer more easily. There are many other applications for this hybrid nanoparticle. We can use it for the ink of inkjet printing because it can be dispersed perfectly. We can fabricate new type of hybrid polymers which have with multi-functions such as UV or IR cut transparent film, electroconductive transparent film, transparent semiconductor or electric circuit RI controlled film, heat conductive film, the Japanese government commissioned us to conduct the national project to fabricate new multifunctional hybrid polymers based on the supercritical hybrid nanocrystals. Now, you may understand that Aichiri Laboratory is challenging to establish the Japan original supercritical method and to create new hybrid nanomaterials. Thank you.